Okay, welcome to chapter 17, which is the electromagnetic induction. In this video, we will talk about the magnetic flux. Okay, recall what you have learned in the video 12.3. Electric flux can be visualized as the number of electric field lines penetrating through an area. Okay, so now this is your area. And then you have to remember that the area vector is always perpendicular to the surface area on every point on the surface area. Okay, so you say that the electric flux V is equal to E dot A. E is the electric field strength and then A is the area vector of the surface area. So the theta, which is the angle between the E and also the area vector, not the surface area itself. Okay, so you know that the angle must be from E to A. Okay, not the angle between E and the surface area. Okay, and then you know that the electric flux is a dot product, so that you know the electric flux is a scalar quantity, and then the electric flux does not have a direction. So by using the same reasoning, magnetic flux can also be visualized as the number of magnetic field lines penetrating through an area. Okay, so for example, let's say you have a coil, okay, and then your coil is from here to here. So this is your plane, and then your coil is surrounding the area. And then the surface area vector is perpendicular to the area. And when the magnetic flux density is parallel with the area vector, then your magnetic flux is maximum. Let's say now the area vector is perpendicular to the magnetic field. That means that the magnetic field is here or here. And then the magnetic field is perpendicular with the surface area vector. Then this time your V is minimum. Okay. So you remember that the magnetic flux is a dot product. Okay. Because it is the magnetic flux density dot area vector. So you know that the magnetic flux is a dot product. And then you say that the magnetic flux is a scalar quantity. And therefore the magnetic flux does not have a direction and then you always remember that the angle is the angle between the B and also the area vector okay just now you only have a coil let's say now you have n turns okay just now you only have one turn only and then let's say now you have n turns of wire then the magnetic flux is the B dot A and then the magnetic flux linkage is N times B dot A. Okay, so for example, let's do a question. A uniform magnetic field of 0 0.08 Tesla passes through a coil of 15 turns with an area of 25 cm squared at an angle of 35 degree with the coil. Okay, please calculate the magnetic flux in the coil. Okay, so this is the coil. And then the question states that the angle between the coil and the B is 35 degree, okay, which is the purple color one, okay. So you always remember that when we say B dot A, B dot A equal to B A cos theta, and then theta is the angle between the B and also the area vector. So the angle between B and the area vector now is 55 degree, okay, which is 90 degree minus the 35 degree, okay. So you know that your theta now is the 55 degree, okay. You always make sure the theta is the angle between B and the area vector, okay. So you know that the magnetic flux is 1.15 times 10 power negative 4 verbal, okay. This is the unit for magnetic flux, and this is also the unit for magnetic flux linkage. Okay, so please calculate the magnetic flux linkage in the coil. Magnetic flux linkage is equal to NB dot A. Okay, that means that the higher the number of turns, 
the larger the magnetic flux linkage. Okay. Which statement is not true about magnetic flux? It is independent of surface area. The magnetic flux V is equal to B dot A equal to B A cos theta. So of course the V is dependent of surface area. So this is wrong. It is zero if the magnetic field is parallel to the surface. Okay, so if the magnetic field is parallel to the surface, that means that the magnetic field is perpendicular to the surface area vector. Okay, so the angle is 90 degree now, and therefore there's no magnetic flux. Okay, so yes, the magnetic flux is zero if the magnetic field is parallel to the surface area. It represents the total magnetic lines of force through a surface. Okay, this is the product of the normal component of magnetic flux density with the surface area. Okay. A small surface area is placed inside a uniform magnetic field. The surface is inclined at an angle theta, which is the angle between the magnetic field and normal to the plane of the surface. Okay, which is the angle between the magnetic field and also the normal to the plane of the surface. Okay, so you know that theta is the angle between B and every vector. Which statement is not true about the magnetic flux through the surface? When theta increases, the magnetic flux through the surface decreases. Okay, so when theta decreases, okay, let's say now the theta is 90 degrees. So you know that V equal to VA cos, let's say 90 degree, cos 90 degree equal to zero. Okay, so you know that when theta increases, the magnetic flux decreases when theta decreases the magnetic flux increases okay for example let's say now the angle is zero degree cos zero degree equal to one okay so you know that the magnetic flux now is the maximum okay so when theta decreases for example when theta decreases to zero the magnetic flux V is the maximum the magnetic flux through the surface area is independent of theta no V equal to BA cos theta, so of course it is dependent on theta. The magnetic flux through the surface is maximum when theta equal to zero. Okay, when theta equal to zero, then the magnetic flux is maximum. Okay, so this is correct. Okay, so this is wrong. In the next video, we will talk about Faraday's law and also the Lenz law.